welcome to another episode of the Stogie Review Video Review. And uh, if you don't know by now, I am Walt. And uh, well, here on Stogie Review, we do more or less uh, weekly cigar reviews uh, with some feature articles and videos kind of intermixed and whatnot. But um, last week I reviewed the Avalon Juke series, the Ebony, and uh, I had mentioned that the following week I was going to smoke uh, the Illusion cigar, and uh, well, that's what I have for you. This is an Illusion F9, and uh, this came courtesy from our good friend Chris Darling, uh, aka CD. You may recommend or remember him from uh, a couple of episodes of YQMA a little while back. Um, I had made mention to him well, several months ago that I hadn't, I hadn't tried the Illusion line of cigars, and uh, he was kind enough to send me about four of them, uh, which ended up being payback for. Uh, when he told me he didn't try the El Cobras, and I sent him a bunch. And, uh, well, what goes around comes around, I guess. But uh, anyway, I got a, a couple of uh, Illusion cigars. I had uh, two F9s and two CG4s. I've had the CG4s and one of the F9s, and uh, this is the last of the batch. Now, these cigars, from what I understand, are only available at select brick-and-mortar cigar shops. Uh, from what it looks like online, just like anything else, if you try hard enough, you can find them online. It looks like uh, Silo Cigars has them, as well as one or two other places that, that have a fairly recognizable name. Now, the F9, is a, it's, it's sort of got like a sub... Each of the cigars have sort of a subtitle. And uh, this one has uh, the finesse next to the F9. The ring gauge is a 44, length is a 6 and a quarter. Wrapper, binder, and filler are all Nicaraguan tobaccos. The filler is a is a combination of first generation Corojo 99 and Criollo 98 fillers, and the wrapper is a Grade One Cafe Colorado, uh, also from Nicaragua. So it's uh, a Nicaraguan puro made in Honduras. Now it's made by Fernandez E. Fernandez, and. Uh, from what I understand of that company, they are a subsidiary of a tropical, or Tobacco Tropical, which is kind of confusing. There's a, there's a lot going on about this brand and, and just a lot of conflicting information on where it's made, but uh, the, the reputable sources seem to say that Fernandez E. Fernandez makes it, so that's what I'm going with. Now, uh, Tropical Tobacco is, uh, I guess, the parent company, more or less, and they're no stranger to Stogie Review. I've actually reviewed three of their products before, all of which are a house blend for uh, Jim Cronin down in uh, Top Shelf. He's got the uh, Top Shelf Signature Select line. Uh, all three of those cigars uh, did very well, so I have high hopes for the, the F9, which is also produced there. Now, uh, the idea behind the cigar was to replicate the world-class tobaccos in Nicaragua pre the 1979 uh, San San takeover in Nicaragua. Uh, you know, it's uh, tough to pronounce words. I'm not accustomed to seeing, but uh, at any point, or yeah, anyway, uh, after this takeover. Uh, Word has it that uh, the quality of tobacco slipped and just kind of, you know, died, took a nosedive. And um, over the last few years, things have been uh, rejuvenated there, recultivated. And uh, Arsenio Ramos of Cuba, from what I understand, is the one that's responsible for recultivating uh, the tobacco in these cigars. And uh, he's, he's, uh, he's world-renowned, as, as far as I can understand. Now, the Illusion cigars are packaged in boxes of 25 for the most part. I did see a box of 12. And uh, it's available in a wide variety of 12 formats. Is that right? I know it's right. Anyway, the Triple Eight, which is a 48 by 6 and 3 quarter, a 4 slash 2G, which is a 49 by 79 and a half, 68, which is a 44 by 4, the F9 is a 44 by 6 and a quarter, 68 is a 52 by 5. 23 is a Culebra, which is uh, three intertwined cigars, which are 33 by 6.5. A, a CG4, which is a 48 by 5 and 5 eighths. An M7 is a 58 by 6.5. The 2, which is a 52 by 5 and a quarter. 
The one was a 48 by 9 and a quarter. The MK was a 42 by 5 and an eighth. And the HL was a 40 by 7 and a half. Now, they all sort of have subtitles along, and I'm not going to read all of them off. But uh, if you go over to IllusionCigar.com, I think it's IllusionCigar.com. Yeah, IllusionCigars.com. There's an S on the end of that. Um, all the all the brands are, or all the sizes are laid out there for you. Yep, 12. And, uh, you know, information about each one is there. Uh, contact information for Dion is also there. Uh, inf information on uh, the brand itself is there. It, it, there's a lot of information there. And uh, it's a pretty neat looking website. Uh, price point on this cigar is about, uh, I think the MSRP is $6.15. But uh, at any rate, I've been talking and talking and talking, so let's get this thing lit. The construction of the cigar looks very nice. As I mentioned, I had three, three, of, three Illusion cigars before this one. And all of them had a very nice, attractive appearance. Uh, they had a, a very high quality look about them. The the wrapper looks very clean, small veins, uh, and it, it feels like they were flattened out. You know, when you kind of handle the cigar, there isn't anything that really protrudes and, and makes it feel rough or unrefined. The color is great too. It's got a, a reddish brown color, uh, deep brown, little reddish hue to it. And uh, it's got a nice oily sheen. It's fairly mild, but uh, it's there nonetheless. The aroma on both the foot and the wrapper itself is uh, like a heavy, earthy aroma, sort of like compost. And it's kind of unique to this particular cigar. It just seems it just uh, smells a little different, uh, more deep and robust, I guess, is the best way to put it. Now, head to foot, the the cigar feels firm. Uh, Firmly packed with the tobacco, it's uh, consistent head to foot, with the exception of one soft spot, which is about right here. And uh, you know, aside from that, the cigar cigar feels great. Uh, looking at the foot, it seems kind of packed. Uh, there's very little space, and tobacco moves a little bit when I squeeze the foot. So I'm curious to see the draw is going to be tight and now I was kind of fondling this cigar before I turned the camera on which is why I'm talking before I'm doing this stuff but at any rate uh, draw is great actually so uh, without any further ado let me get a cigar lit or try to anyway you know uh, for a while you know I, I thought that uh just the way that you lit the cigar, just it didn't quite matter. And now that I've been uh, doing this complete toast sort of uh, process where I'm not drawing the heat through the cigar, I'm beginning to taste a huge difference. I don't know whether it's just me or what, but I'm liking them a lot better. Or at least the, the initial first couple of puffs just seem that much cooler and nicer. Uh, they, they don't really overwhelm just takes a little while. And you gotta be careful not to scorch the wrapper, which it looks like it did a little bit. Well, cigars lit. I'm getting big plumes of smoke. Draw's not bad. Uh, cigar tastes good, so uh, give me a sec. I'm gonna settle into the cigar a little bit. Uh, we'll be back after you look at a few pictures, check out a, or listen to a quick uh, sound clip courtesy of podshow.com. And I'll uh, be back. We'll get started on the first third and, uh, and see how the illusion starts out. It's been about 30 minutes now, and I'm working my way through the first third of my Illusion F9. And uh, so far, everything is going very well. Uh, I have one minor complaint, but we'll get to that later. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the cigar starts off medium-bodied, 
and uh, it doesn't take long to sort of come into its own. Uh, after a f the, the first, I don't know, maybe three puffs, four puffs, uh, initially it, it's got a like a, an upfront tobacco taste that's not bad, uh, but it's it's sort of middle of the road. And then uh, you sort of get into it a little bit, and then uh, it, it really just comes into its own. It's got a very unique, sort of crisp, clean feeling on the finish. And uh, it's really the, the best way to know how to describe it. It's, uh, it just tastes very crisp and, uh, and just very clean. It doesn't leave any sort of lingering, I don't know, dirt or, or cigar breath kind of feeling in, your, in the mouth. Um, as I mentioned, the, the body is medium. And, uh, you know, after that, that uh, the, the smoke expels out of your mouth, you let it settle a sec. And uh, it's sort of creamy. The creaminess lasts uh, about a minute or so, and then uh, you're just left with this nice crisp feeling, which is, I don't know, it's very nice, it, and uh, I don't come, a, come across it very often in, in uh, a lot of cigars. Now, in the flavor department, uh, I'm getting a, kind of an odd mixture here, but uh, it, it just works. Uh, the three most notable flavors that I'm getting out of it are uh, black pepper, a little bit of saltiness, and uh, black licorice. And, uh, you know, I just, the flavor combination sounds odd, but you really have to sort of taste it. It, it just works, and uh, I, I really like it. Now, in the construction department, um, everything's going well. The, the burn line is, it's a little wavy, but, again, well, well within reason. Uh, it's thin, it's, it's dark, uh, the burn rate is good. As I mentioned, I'm 30 minutes into it, and I have to... You know, that standard disclaimer applies. Uh, take my smoke time and divide it by two, and uh, and you'll probably get uh, a realistic time frame of a very slow smoker, especially when I do these reviews. Cigars tend to spend a lot of time in the ashtray. But uh, even at my pace, uh, things are going very well, and I, as I said, I'm about 30 minutes into it. Now, I had mentioned that I only had about one minor complaint so far, and that was uh, an, unexpe an unexpected dropping ash on my floor, but um, fortunately it was uh, didn't land on me or the, the laptop and uh, it was easily swept up. Now, uh, the ash doesn't hold on for very long. Uh, it gets to about half inch, three quarters of an inch and then uh, just give it a light tap and, and off it comes. It's not flaky, it's not difficult to manage, you just need to keep an eye on it and, uh, and know that, you know, when it gets uh, I don't know, about twice that length, it's it's about time to knock the ash off. And uh, and just keep an eye on it and everything will be good. So, anyway, I want to keep these these uh, these segments fairly short as uh, as the beginning went on, on and on and on. So, uh, with that said, I'm going to take a quick break, take a look at some more pictures of the Illusion F9, and uh, we'll be back. We'll work on the second third and uh, we'll see how things go. From the park in the harbor, I went roaming on shore And stepped into a pub where I was all time before And as I was sitting and enjoying my glass Who chance to walk in but a young Spanish lass She sat down beside me and kept squeezing my hand Saying, sir, you're a stranger, not along to this land Will you roam, Johnny? Welcome back, and uh, we've got a totally elapsed time of about 55 minutes now, and uh, I wanted to cut the, cut the camera back on just a few minutes shorter than I normally would have, and uh, and let you see the cigar a little bit. And uh, as you can see, I've got a little bit of flaking going on, and that just happens to be right uh, where I felt that soft spot. So you can see, Due to the flowering, you can see right where uh, where there was a little bit of a hollow spot, and, uh, and the wrapper's kind of curling away from it. Um, the cigar is smoking very well. Uh, I just kind of wanted to point out that due to that little soft spot, you you're going to naturally get a little bit of flowering because there's nothing to really hold the tobacco in place and, and sort of uh, in, a, in a, a bit of a like a compressed form or a compacted form, I should say. The 
the burn is a little erratic. From time to time, it gets uh, a little on the wavy side, and then uh, it's you know back to straight again. Um, but for the most part, it's really not getting out of control. Uh, it's not difficult to handle, and in fact, I, I really haven't even had to touch this thing up. Matter of fact, I haven't had to touch this thing with a lighter at all. So the burn is, uh, it is correcting itself. It, it, it kind of worries you a little bit. It's, it's nearing that, that, uh, that imaginary line that I draw on the cigar and say it's, uh, it's within reason. It's been, it's been getting very close to that. But uh, before it, I deem it too bad and uh, requires a touch up. It, it straightens itself out. So uh, the construction is, is very nice. The body has slowly transitioned from medium to medium to full. The finish is still mildly creamy. It's uh, nice and crisp. Still, still getting that nice clean feeling. Uh, the only difference now is uh, right before that crispness comes in, I'm getting a very heavy, uh, almost like a syrupy kind of thick feel in the mouth. Uh, not quite creamy, just really thick, if that makes any sense. Uh, in the flavor department, there's been a little bit of a change. Uh, that, that sort of black licorice flavor that I was getting earlier on uh, has faded away and it's and uh, it's been replaced by a sort of a tart flavor that comes on after the initial wave of flavor. Uh, you know, after the, the smoke's expelled from the mouth, uh, you give the palate the rest a second and then uh, you get this nice sort of tart flavor. Uh, the initial flavor that I'm getting is uh, predominantly uh, black pepper and a very rich natural Corojo tobacco flavor. Um, and if you've seen these videos before, you know that I'm a sucker for that Corojo tobacco flavor. I just I can't get enough of it. And uh, the cigar's really delivering in that department. And uh, I'm, I got notes in front of me. I've got a, a little bit of spice here and there, a sweet spice through the sinuses when, uh, when I'm retrohaling, quote unquote. So all in all, this, the, the cigar is going very well. Uh, I'm really enjoying the second third, and uh, like I said in the last third, I want to keep these these clips fairly short so that we don't get a 35 minute video this time around. So uh, with that said, uh, sit tight. I'll be back. We'll do the final third, and uh, let you be on your way. <laughs> cigar down soon and uh, the burn rate has been good well, it's been good to me anyway uh, I'm looking at about 90 minutes now and uh, well I've run into um, another little bit of a problem and uh, that is just like in that post I made a couple of weeks ago about when good cigars go bad I ran into an issue and I ran into a situation where there was a hole in the filler uh, a void and as soon as I hit that spot, I mean, it was like a flipping a switch. The, the, the sheer smoke volume went from just being very thick and, and generous down to, you know, very airy and thin. And, and the cigar has been heating up quite a bit ever since. And as soon as the cigar begins to get hot, uh, the, the flavors are getting harsh and uh, it's, it's becoming unenjoyable. And, um, you know... This is my fourth illusion, and uh, it's the first time I've had this problem. It's coincidental that, that I happen to have this problem uh, tw twice, fairly close to one another, but uh, it happens, and you really can't blame the cigar for it. It, it, uh, it happens from time to time, you just have to accept it. Uh, aside from that, you know, the, the, the cigar's been very good to me. The, the draw, it's, it's got a little bit of resistance to it. It doesn't make me draw too hard on it. Um, up until the, the void in the filler, I was getting lots and lots of smoke. Very thick, easy to get through the sinuses, just kind of 
lingered around the room, big plumes of smoke. You know, very nice uh, in that aspect. The burn line was a little erratic from time to time. Uh, for the most part, it seems to have corrected itself. As I mentioned, the burn rate is good. I'm at about 90 minutes now. Again, uh, for, for the average person, probably take that time, uh, cut it in half, and you've got a realistic smoke time. The the flavors haven't changed much. I'm still getting a very rich Corojo tobacco flavor, some black pepper, and uh, sweet spice when I pass the smoke through my sinuses. The only difference now is that uh, the flavors are becoming more rich, more complex. They've got more character. And, uh, you know, that, that typically happens as you progress through a cigar. And it's not a big surprise, but it's, uh, while it's not a transition from one totally different taste to another, it's, uh, it's a nice change nonetheless because uh, the, the smoke just seems to, to become very rich and, and enjoyable. And as I had mentioned numerous times before, I'm just, uh, I'm a big Corojo guy. I, I love the flavor, and uh, this is no exception. I, you know, I'm really enjoying this cigar. The body has transitioned a little bit more. I mean, uh, we're still in the medium to full range, but it's picked up slowly but surely throughout. And uh, the finish has transitioned from uh, mildly creamy to a, a very thick, sort of coats the walls of your mouth, the, the palate, uh, makes, you, makes it a little difficult to talk at times, very thick. And uh, if you let that subside for a minute or two after each puff, you're left with that same crisp and clean feeling that I've been getting all along, and, and, and I really enjoy that about this cigar. I think it's, it's, uh, it's a very nice touch. And... Uh, uh, I'm still getting a little bit of a, a tart flavor after the, that first initial wave of uh, flavors goes past. Uh, all in all, you know, I really enjoyed this cigar, and it's a shame that I can't get a hold of more of these in my area. There are two shops that are very close to my house. Uh, one is I'm probably two miles. The other one can't be more than five. Uh, both of them have uh, a decent selection. Neither of them carry the Illusions. Now, I did happen to see these once in a local shop. Uh, well, I say local because it's it's here in Pennsylvania, but it's all out in Gettysburg. And uh, I remember them being more than the 615 MSRP that I'm seeing this listed as. So I don't know if it was just a situation where they're very difficult to get a hold of and uh, when the prices increased to, to show that or what. But uh, I didn't pick up any when I was out there. Uh, it was a fairly quick trip. I had some some stuff going on during the during the day, but uh, at any rate, um, I can't get these locally. Uh, from from what I'm seeing, I can get them from uh, from the odd uh, internet retailer, but uh, the price seems to be up a little higher than the MSRP. I don't know whether that's just an old MSRP or if uh, across the board they're they're being priced higher just because they're more difficult to get a hold of. Uh, in a nutshell, I enjoyed the cigar. I'll definitely be smoking more of them. Uh, I'm going to chalk up the, the void in the filler to a fluke. As I said, it's my the one out of four I had an issue with. And uh, I could, I'd could i be willing to bet that if I smoked ten more, I probably wouldn't have that problem again. But uh, all in all, you know, again, not to sound like a broken record, but I enjoyed it. And uh, I want to thank Chris, a.k.a. CD, for sending them my way. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, as far as what I'm going to be smoking for next week's review, I say it every week, I have no idea. I do have a list of cigars that I really need to review, and I'm just kind of picking from it as I go along. Uh, maybe the one that I'll do next week, maybe I'll do an IPCPR cigar if I can find one on the list of things that I have to do. If not, it'll either be uh, an Esther Miranda uh, special selection, or it will be a uh, Low Aurora Barrel Aged. Uh, because both of them have been requested before, and uh, I just happen to have both of them. So, uh, at any rate, I enjoyed this cigar. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be smoking next week. I'll try to remember to leave a comment before then. But uh, until next week, happy smoking.